Okay, at this point, the head is ready to be lifted. Try not to grab with the cam, cam gears out. Try to grab one of the studs, just so you don't uh, have a chance of uh, turning it from TDC. And the head's off. Okay, so this is what it looks like without the cylinder head on. Just a couple notes, guys. I don't know if this was from once I removed the head that it got leaked in there prior, or if this has just been settling in there, but yeah, coolant should not be in there, <laughs> as well as all these other areas. As I said, I don't know for certain if that's exactly from the, uh, you know, from when the head gasket blew, or if just when I took the head off, it all just seeped down from wherever it, it was sitting at it originally, but yeah, so next thing I'm gonna do is just uh, take this old head gasket off. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna want a really good uh, clean mating surface for both the block as well as the head. Now, believe it or not, I already took the, uh, already took the head gasket off, but there's gonna be a little bit of remnants on the block as well as the cylinder head that just get stuck on there. So pretty much, apparently, so you kinda want it back looking somewhat like this, where it's just smooth, metal, not uh, left over of the gasket, all these little dots, things you see here, you want to scrape that off. I'm going to use a uh, razor blade, just be very careful not to try to drop any of the gaskets in any of these cooling holes. But yeah, this is going to be a, not too hard of a task, but just more of a time consuming. So you want to do this for both this and the head, and then after that, we're going to check for straightness. Okay, so an important step before deciding whether or not just replacing the head gasket and slapping the head back on is a good idea or not. So this isn't actually the proper tool to use it. I don't know where my uh, straight edge ruler is, but that's what you're gonna need is a straight edge ruler or anything that's basically like perfectly flat. And what you're gonna wanna do is lay it across the bottom of the cylinder head in multiple ways, this way being primarily one of them. You do it this way, uh, diagonally like this on both ways. Obviously the straight edge ruler is going to be as long if not a little bit longer than the cylinder, cylinder head itself. So this way, this way, this way, up here, down here, like this, and like this. So some pretty common ways to check. So basically what you want to look for is warpage. And the way you're going to check for warpage is a uh, most simple way to use is getting a feeler gauge. Now, from what the master manual for the our cars call for and recommend is anything, I'm gonna get this camera to focus, anything uh, two thousandths of an inch or below does not need to be, um, pretty, doesn't need to be resurfaced for it to have a proper seal. Anything uh, between two thousandths of an inch to five thousandths uh, will need to be resurfaced and is considered warped according to the Honda manual. Surprisingly, I went through basically, so what you're gonna do basically is, sorry, bear with me for a second. So imagine if this is the straight edge, the straight edge uh, ruler you have here, laid across. So you're gonna get your 2000s. So basically any, anything, uh, two thousandths. If this goes through underneath, then your head is warped at that area and your head's gonna need to be resurfaced to allow for a proper seal, if that makes any sense. So you wanna do this for all the ways I just showed you. Sorry, but it's a bit out of focus, guys. I'm trying to film and do this at the same time. So you guys get the idea. So I'm just, just exaggerating here, but so basically if this goes, if this goes through it, 
you basically have a warp at that area and your head needs to be resurfaced. Uh, you can throw the head back on warped if you want, depending on how terrible your uh, warp is, and you could probably get away with it for a while, but um, be ready to be able, basically do another head gasket job, if that's the case. So, but a really good rule of thumb is though, guys, if you guys were have the, head, the cylinder head off, you might as well just get the head, at least like resurfaced, uh, get it cleaned up, you know, maybe get, get, do some performance head job on it while it's off, but just some recommendations while you're kind of already there and make sure you just do a cleanup of the area, make sure you make the valves at all nice and clean again before slapping it on. Okay, so as for the block goes, I didn't finish this side yet, as you can see, it's starting to get a little more cleaned up around here, but this is what it used to look like, and that's just a mixture of just oil mixing with the coolant, as well as I'm pretty sure, because I let this sit longer than I wanted to, so I'm sure there might be some rust in there. I'm not sure, it depends on if you guys just use straight water or more water than uh, coolant, if you let it just sit possibility of rust in the block but it all depends on everybody else's cases so another good thing i forgot to mention too drip because you're going to want to do a coolant flush in my case because uh, since the oil mixed in with the coolant quite a bit uh 17 millimeter bolt in front of the block you loosen this up coolant will actually uh shoot up from there from the block itself there's another bolt in the back and i know there's more than those two that you'll be able to drain coolant from the block but this should be this should be suffice. So what I'm gonna do, so if you have if you could do it at this stage, the most smartest thing would be able to take the block and get it um, hot tanked and just get it totally cleaned out where you won't have any nasty brown, milky coolant mixed with oil uh, liquid uh, anywhere in your system. But another way you guys could do it too, which is I'm gonna approach this. It's not really like the most ideal way of doing it, but it, I would still consider it a flush. You guys can just get um, like a funnel and put in all like these coolant passages and stuff. And then, yeah, because if you take this off and you pour water in it, it'll come out right through there. And you guys can continue doing that until the coloration turns from that brown milky uh, liquid to just clear water. Uh, totally up to you. You guys can do on each passage to where everything looks clean. Or you guys can just throw in a whole new system. And then if you guys want to drive it around for a while, get things hot up and mixed in and then just... Uh, do a coolant flush maybe like one to three times totally up to you till like everything's purely clear and you don't see any uh any more uh that brown liquid anywhere in your coolant system so that's a su suggestion definitely not the best way as like i said the best way of doing this is just basically getting the block hot tanked and even getting the head uh just cleaned up through a machine shop basically you go through a machine shop for both of these processes that's almost a guarantee you'll have a close to ideally new setup and another thing to note, just while we're here, this isn't uh, head gasket or cylinder head removal uh, related, but so this is what the A20, specifically the A20 A3 block looks like. All A series blocks look like this. And the reason why some of us uh, recommend before you consider doing a swap for a better build, more higher power build, that uh, um, what's the most common things for almost everything, B series, D series, and so on and so forth is uh, the strength of the block, especially when people start talking about like B20 blocks being weak and stuff and people getting sleeve blocks or the, using the cylinder support system, the, C, the CSS blocks. For the A20, you don't have to because it's a solid deck block, solid deck iron block. So as far as like doing like a turbo setup, this block is pretty much just ready to go for that from factory. Uh, obviously, uh, the one thing you would have to do to even ensure uh, a better outcome in that build, which is replace the pistons, and I'll do another episode on that unless you guys do your own research on upgrading uh, to forge internals for the A20 on the 3G's forum, which I highly recommend. So just figure I take advantage of that while the head is off so you guys can get a good look at what an A20 solid deck iron block looks like. Uh,